All right, so here's an AP problem. I retyped it, made it look exactly the same. <coughs> um, it's got a graph on it, and then it says a graph of f consisting of three line segments is given above, where g of x equals 1 to x. First thing it says is compute g of 4 and g of negative 1. So I'm going to do the work up here. So g of 4 is what I would start with because it's the first one. It's 1 to 4. At least it's going in the right direction, right? Yeah, so listen. I just need to find the area of these shapes, all right, and do the math. So I would pro yeah, I would probably do a, a little square and then the triangle. So I would probably write out on the AP this. I would go one by one, right? And then this is where I'm trying to be careful because this is where I tend to screw up. One by three. I double check my math. I take a second here. So it's plus one half, one by three plus, and this triangle is one half, one by one, plus negative, and I do a plus to show I'm doing it, and it, I know this is under, plus one half, one by one, so those cancel, and I get one plus three halves, so I get g of four equals we'll do five halves, all right? And that's, that's the answer. So then I would have all this work for that. All right. And I would probably, and I would have that. So there's that. Whoops. And then if I, the next thing I would do would be to do G of 1 or G of negative 2. Sorry. G of negative 2. Now, I know it's going to be negative. I, because it's going backwards. I probably wouldn't take the time to flip the limits and put the negative sign in front. It's above the curve. All right. On the AP, I wouldn't do this step. I would skip this step myself because I know it so well. But I'm going to have this. It's going to be, so I would put negative one half, and then the base is three. The height is four, and I get negative six. And g of negative 2 is negative 6. And that's the first answer. And it's for the AP, these are each worth a point. Okay? So, and I might need these later. So I'm going to make these right below here so we have them. I don't know if I need them later. I haven't read through the problem today. All right? But that is what's going on. On um, the next thing. All right. It says find the instantaneous rate of change of G with respect to X at X equals 1. Guys, instantaneous rate of change, what do they mean? They want G prime. All this language means that they want you to find yeah, G prime of X, and we've learned that the derivative of this, especially since this does not have a chain rule going on with it, this is just going to be F of X. So I would write that. I would go g prime of 1 equals f of 1 equals 4. And that is the answer for letter B, and that's the point. So that's worth 1. So we're 3 points in out of 9. Even 6 points in the last 2. All right? Find the absolute minimum of g on the closed interval negative 2 to 4. Just by your answer. All right. Well, listen. Two things. We have to realize there are two things here. Obviously, if, it, if you're going to have a min or max, we're going to look for a sign change in the first derivative. You guys agree? So the first thing I'm going to be really interested in is where is g prime equal to zero? That is not good enough, guys, because you also have to chuck full endpoints. So you should have three things happening here. One, first thing I would do is write, I want to know when g prime of x equals zero. I look at the graph. All right, I look at the graph, and it x equals negative 2 and 3. Negative 2 is an endpoint, all right? And I would also then just do this. 3, I, I, I already know 3 is not going to be that, it's not going to be a minimum, all right? Because what's happening? G prime at, here's what I would probably write, at, x equals 3 
G prime goes positive to negative. Guys, what do we know when it goes positive to negative? The max. So thus max. Then I would go check end check endpoints, right? And if you can remember that, you don't have to write this, but if you remember, that's extreme value theorem, right? So we're going to check the endpoints. Guys, what was letter A? Letter A was the endpoints. So I can write that G of 4 was 5 halves and G of negative 2 was negative 6. So the absolute minimum is negative 6 because, all right, because the one other max or min is a max, and it's, it's the lowest value of the two endpoints. Boom. That's all, guys. And I'm not going to write that, but that's all I would write for a sudden. Interior analysis. Guys, they gave a point for this stuff that you considered three, you know, that you thought about the middle of it. They gave you, oh, my gosh, guys, probably just saying check endpoints if you get the point. They wanted some analysis of the endpoints, right? And finally, they wanted you to have the answer to, to explain negative six, all right? So, all right, that takes us through C. So I can write what's our answer? Negative six by IVT, or EVT, extreme value theorem, because it was one of the endpoints. So let's do that as a note. Last one today is the second derivative of g is not defined at x equals 1 and x equals 2. How many of these values are, are x coordinates of points of inflection of g? First of all, let's go back. Let's go back to this thing and write that g prime prime of x equals f prime of x, right? We take the derivative of both sides. Now, everybody, you should be able to see that those derivatives are not existing because the left and right hand and the right hand are not the same on either of those points. All right, so if I get rid of those, what, when do you have a point of inflection? A point of inflection occurs when g prime prime changes sign. All right? So, so at x equals 1, g prime prime goes positive and negative. All right, guys, then I would just write the word, and I would go down a line here, and maybe I can move this up so I have run. Thus, a point of inflection, right? Now, I think you have to consider and write out some, whoops, write out some information. So, thus pi, thus point of inflection, okay? Why is 2 not a point of inflection? Because the derivative goes negative to negative. Thus, there is no point of inflection at 2. So, at x equals 1, because the sign change of g prime prime is the answer. All right? So, you had to explain why this was, that you looked at this, you had to explain the sign change. Guys, the last point was explaining why this was not a point of inflection. Name and name. You had to say it. All right. So, yes.